Hey everybody, welcome to Practical Alchemy. Today's episode is gonna be all about introducing you to parameters and how to use them, why you should be using them, which you absolutely should because they are going to make your modeling faster and more flexible and more useful in the long run. So in order to introduce the concept of parameters, I have created this very simple birdhouse. Now this birdhouse, I'm just going to walk you through very quickly before we get started uh, in depth in terms of how to do the parameters, what parameters are. I just want to talk you through this model. So this birdhouse is essentially four different bodies. It's got the main house, the landing pad for the little bird, the base plate, and the roof. Now this is modeled like you would normally model something that you may not have totally designed before you start. So started off with a single, we'll go back through the timeline very quickly here just to kind of show you what this birdhouse is made of. So starts off as a single sketch, talking about the height, the width, and the pitch of the roof. From there, it's a single extrude for the body, and then a shell to give it some wall thickness. The next step was to sketch out the hole for the little bird. So basically got a diameter here where the post is. And if I zoom in just a little bit, you can see I've got a offset here to define the size of the hole, which is going to be slightly larger than the peg that's going to go in the hole to account for our manufacturing tolerances. From there, I created two extrudes. One is an extruded cut and the second is the hole. Next up is a very simple sketch defining the base. So we've got two offsets, one on the outside, and then a little bit of an extend for the front ledge, and then an interior offset, again, to account for the manufacturing tolerances. The thought here is that you would maybe 3D print this, and so you'd want the base to be extruded inside. So you can see that here's the main base extrude, and then a second extrude that goes inside the birdhouse to give it a little bit of a platform to press the pieces together. And then finally, we've got a sketch for the roof, which has a slight overhang. And then a extrude for the roof. And lastly, just a slight interior for that roof. Same thing. So I did a little bit of an interior uh, so that we could snap that roof onto the birdhouse. And that is a very quick breakdown of the birdhouse and how it was constructed. You could see in that walkthrough that there's a lot of geometry that was defined in the sketches. What parameters do is it allows you to take those variables outside of the timeline itself and define them in a way that allows you to very quickly update the model and specifically a lot of different things inside of the model in a single location rather than having to search back through your sketches. So, Let's try to explain that with an example. You already know that I have some parametrically driven uh, features inside of this model. For example, the base of the birdhouse is an offset from this main sketch. So if I go into this sketch and edit it, and I update the thickness to 3.5, hit finish sketch, this base platform is going to extend based off of that because it's offset by a quarter of an inch. So, that's how we can drive. I'm just going to undo those very quickly. That's how we can add things parametrically to the model. Where parameters become very useful is when we have things that need to be defined in multiple locations. So for example, in this birdhouse, all of the pieces are the same thickness. The walls are the same thickness on the birdhouse. It's the same thickness as the base is the same thickness of the roof. So if I want to go back and edit that thickness, well, I'm going to have to do that in multiple locations. Let's say instead of a half of an inch thick, I wanted it to be three quarters of an inch thick. I would have to go through and edit the uh, thickness out of that. See, I'm already forgetting as I'm doing it. I'm going to have to modify the thickness of the shell and then I'm going to have to go through and modify oops, the thickness of this extrude point negative 0.5 and then I'm going to have to come into this extrude oh nope that one's in the sketch all right you're starting to see why this becomes 
a problem, right? It's very difficult, especially as your models become more and more complicated, to remember all of the locations where you have things defined. So how do we change that? That is going to be with parameters. So in order to access the parameters, you are going to go up here to the modify tool and you are going to click the change parameters tab. When you pull up that tab, you are going to get this dialog box and it's going to have a few things in it. To create a parameter, what you're going to do is go here to the user parameters and click the plus sign. So the first value that I want to uh, define is the bird house, well, let's make this a little simpler, house height. Okay, and that house height is going to be expressed in interest and the value is going to be, what did we say that our bird house was? It was four, okay, and hit okay. And then I can keep going, just adding more and more parameters. So I can add the width of the house as uh, three. And I'm going to add the roof pitch as four. as, let's see, that is going to be in degrees and that is going to be 45. Okay, so now I've got three variables that I can call from this parameter table. So in order to use them, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into my sketch, edit that sketch, and where I've got this diameter listed, what I can do is I can just type in the value of the parameter. So I can type in it house and you start typing and it's going to pull it up and now you can see that it is called the house height parameter it's got a little functional call out here hit enter and so now it's still four inches tall but it is now driven by this function we're going to go back in here and we are going to call that the width hit enter and we are going to go in here and name this as the roof pitch all right, very good, and finish that sketch. Another the great thing about parameters is that you can do math with them. So for example, if I want to always have the hole in the middle of the birdhouse be half of the distance of the width of the birdhouse overall, I'm gonna add a new parameter here. All right, I'm going to call this the uh, bird hole. <laughs> And let's see, enter the expression, uh, the value here, and I'm going to call the width parameter, and I'm going to divide that by 2. Hit OK. Now you can see that this is what the actual expression is, and this is the value of that expression, 1.5. And then I'm going to hit OK. Now I can go into my uh, sketch here. And rather than have this be set as 1.5, I am going to set this as the uh, bird hole user parameter. Okay, so another really nice thing about this is that now, again, when I go back into my uh, parameter table, so change parameters, if I come here and I decide I actually want the width to be uh, 3.5, you can see that as I select that, the bird whole size parameter is going to update in real time to 1.75. So keeping it as half of the width. Very cool. Next thing I want to talk to you about is model parameters. So there is a way to create parameters inside of your sketch. So for example, let's go into our uh, birdhouse sketch here. And let's say we want this um, peg hole to be uh, 0.25, but we decide on the fly we want to make that a dimension. So we call this the peg hole. The way you do that is you write it as word. It has to be one word. You can't have any spaces. Equals, um, let's see, 0.25, and hit enter. Here is the first thing that you're going to notice. It's not a real parameter in the sense that it is not a global parameter that is outside of the timeline. You can see that unlike the real parameter here, it does not have the FX equation. Now, when you pull up the uh, parameter table, what you see here is in the favorites, it has been called. So this peg hole is here. You can change the expression here, 
but it's still somewhat limited. Essentially what it is, is it's just one of the dimensions that is listed in this sketch, right? You can see everything else here, uh, all these other dimensions that are called, like the 0.03, they just don't really have a name. They're not really favorited. I could favorite that one just the same and then give it a name afterwards, but I would really recommend you avoid doing this. The reason that I'm going to recommend that you don't do this, number one, because it's not shown in the actual sketches, it's very hard to remember what all you've called and what all you've created. I think that's the first problem that you're going to run into. The other problem, let's say I wanted to add this hole above as well, just to hang a little lantern for my bird. So I go back to my original sketch. I create a new circle, all right, and I want it to be the same size. Yes, you can do this. So I can create this dimension, and I can call it. I can call peg hole. The problem is, and hit enter. It does call this as a variable or as a parameter, but let's say I now exit this sketch and I delete this sketch. All right, we're not going to do that, but just imagine that I deleted that sketch, right? Now I don't have this variable to call anymore because there's not, the original reference is gone. The real advantage of creating, in my opinion, will be considered to be user parameters versus model parameters is that they exist outside of the timeline. I can create a new user parameter at any time and call it, go back in my timeline, adjust my sketches, um, or just as I'm doing things, I can adjust my sketches. But if I create it as part of a sketch, it just doesn't really make sense to me. Uh, what you see there is if you unstar it, it hides it. It's still in the model tree. I can still find it by going into um, the front hole here and refavoriting it. But again, I really just recommend that you do not um, create parameters that way. All right, now that we understand the basics, why is this useful? Why is this valuable to you? Well, beyond just having to the ability to uh, maintain some dimensions outside of the sketches, so you don't have to go through and remember where you placed everything and where you've referenced everything. The real value here is how it allows you to modify your models if you are still designing them in real time and you want to play with proportions and you want to play with styles, or if you're doing things that you're going to assemble. So for example, I'm going to go back here and I'm going to create a new parameter and I'm going to call this my model tolerances. If you've never heard me talk about model tolerances before, and in this case I'm going to set this as 0.03. If you've never heard me talk about model tolerances before, this is essentially the value that you would use to offset your surfaces from each other so that when you print them out, they have enough room or give or play to slide between each other. Now, based off of your 3D printer or your CNC machine, your model tolerances, the tolerance of your machine may be different. So let's go through here and set up some model tolerances. You can see that I have a tolerance here on this peg and also on the base. All right. So if I go into this sketch here, I'm going to update this to the model tolerance hit enter and finish that sketch. Uh, then I'm going to go into this next top sketch here and I'm going to set this as negative model tolerance and finish that sketch. And then I'm going to go into my uh, top sketch here where I also, very hard to see, but I also have a tolerance uh, for the lid and that's actually captured, hit enter actually should be captured in two spaces. Oh, and I didn't even dimension that one, but it should be captured here so that you can slide this lid back on. All right. And again, you, and that is my model tolerance parameter. So if I go through and there's a few more tolerances I want to create, but I want to just show you this really quick. So let's say I get a new 3d printer. I can have tighter tolerances. I can go through here. Once I've designed my entire model, go up to the parameters and I can change that parameter to 0.01 and I can be confident that it is going to update the offsets in every single one of those locations to be perfectly updated. It saved me so much time. I don't need to remember all the different places where I use that tolerance. I can do it 
one time. Uh, let's go through and talk about how you can use it to create a lot of different designs as well. So for example, let's add a few more parameters to this table. We're gonna need our porch sides. So our porch sides are going to be uh, 0.3 inches. We are going to have, and you can fast forward through this if uh, you wanna just skip to the end here. All right, everyone, so with the power of editing, you can see that we now have a full parameter table. Everything about our house has now been defined, everything that we feel like we would want to make edits to later on, and I've got a few that I've starred, the height, the width, the depth of the house, the roof pitch, and the size of the hole for the little bird. And I'm gonna hit okay, and again, I'm gonna go through and redefine all of those uh, dimensions in the sketches with these new parameters. So we're gonna start that off, and then we are going to fast forward, so already seen how to do it in the first sketch. Now we need to go to the extrusion, edit that feature, and we can change that to step. All right, I think you get the idea, and so I'm just going to keep fast forwarding here. Okay, and so with the power of editing, we've fast forwarded to, you can see that I'm defining my last feature, which is the roof lip as the offset beyond the edge of the house. So, and then we hit okay. Now, a couple of key things that I want you guys to take away from this. Number one, you do not have to create a parameter for everything. A lot of times that's gonna be overkill. It all depends on the complexity of your model and what you feel like you may want to go back and edit later on. Number two, you can add parameters at any time. You don't have to have it all defined right up front. There was a few times when I was doing this and I said, oh, I forgot this parameter. And so whether I was in the sketch or whether I was in the extrusion or whatever I was in, I just pulled up the parameter table and I added it to it. Number three, you can create, you can call these parameters in a lot of different commands. So for example, you saw me call it in a sketch, you just saw me call it an extrude, you could call it in a revolve command, in an offset command. There's a lot of different ways that you can use these parameters. All right, so let's get to why this is really cool and how this can be useful to you as part of your design process. Let's say you're gonna sell these birdhouses and you wanna create a lot of different variations really, really quickly. Well, when you go into your parameter table, you could literally redesign this birdhouse on the Okay, so now it's time to get into why this is really cool and useful for you as a maker. Let's say you have designed this birdhouse and you're looking to sell it. And so you get some customer requests and they say, hey, I love your birdhouse, but could you just make it a little bit taller? Can I have a five inch tall birdhouse? You can come into your parameter table, update the height to five and boom, model is updated. And then the next person comes and says, hey, I actually need kind of a short birdhouse. Can you make me one that's three inches tall, 3.5 inches tall? And I also want it to be a very uh, shallow birdhouse. So it can only be 1.5 inches deep. That's all I've got space for. And my bird is a little bit smaller. I only need a uh, one inch hole for my bird. All of that can be updated very, very quickly. Last thing is material thickness. If you are going to be CNCing or doing any type of woodworking where you're gonna have variability in the thickness of your material, and then you're gonna be using that to create CAD files or cutting files. Being able to update your material on the fly is huge in terms of redoing this model. Let's say I get a piece of wood and it's actually, uh, instead of 0.25 inches thick, it's 0.255 inches thick. You're just gonna make that very subtle tweak in your material. You're not even gonna see it in your model tree, but it's going to show up in your model. Uh, but all that to say, I hope you're really seeing the power of what you can do with parameters. You haven't just created one birdhouse, you have created infinite birdhouses. You have created the multiverse of birdhouses. All right, everyone, that is going to wrap it up for today. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you have any questions or comments or topics that you'd like to see in future videos, put those down in the comments below. And lastly, to stay up to date with future content and new releases and new videos, hit the subscribe button, which is really going to help out the channel. All right, everyone, that is going to be it for today, and I will see you in the next one. And don't forget to hit save.